When we talk about 20th century music theory, when it pertains to classical music, it is impossible to ignore the 12-tone system of composition developed by Arnold Schoenberg, which defined the second Viennese school of composition. Schoenberg's innovation defined the concert music of the 20th century, and it was a complete theoretical revolution in how one could go about composing music. Except Schoenberg did not invent 12-tone music. No, that title belongs to another Viennese composer named Josef Matthäus Hauer. So why is Hauer almost completely forgotten and Schoenberg revered as one of the greatest music theorists of the 20th century? Josef Matthäus Hauer was born in 1883 in Wiener Neustadt, which is a small city near Vienna, Austria, which at that time was capital of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Hauer would receive cello, organ, piano, and singing lessons in his youth, but fascinatingly enough, he never received any compositional training, but rather taught himself the fundamentals of theory and harmony. In his teenage years, nearby Vienna would undergo a massive change in artistic style, from Egon Schiele and Gustav Klimt in painting, to Otto Wagner and Adolf Lust in architecture. Vienna would become a bastion of modernism, and the avant-garde equaled perhaps only by Paris. Hauer would grow up during this time of radical cultural change and decadence, and it is without question that this very environment in Vienna would help develop his musical tastes. Hauer, however, did not publish any compositions to the public until 1913, making him 30 years old by the time he started making his mark on the Viennese music scene, whilst Schoenberg was already a well-established composer in Vienna, who had already composed many atonal works. However, these initial works by Schoenberg, such as this string quartet, are freely atonal, meaning they do not follow a system like the 12 tone. Around this time, in 1912, Hauer began working on his Baustein technique, which was his preliminary name for the 12 tone system he would develop in 1919, and present theoretically in his book Vom Wesen des Musikalischen, which was published in 1920. Due to the fact Schoenberg and Hauer lived in the same city and were part of similar social circles, and Schoenberg was acquainted with Hauer and his compositions, it is a hard argument to make that Schoenberg knew nothing of Hauer's music or compositional ideas. It is more often than not suggested that Schoenberg and Hauer developed similar yet different 12-tone systems independently from one another. I personally have my problems with this idea, as I think the criteria for independent development can only be reached when two figures know nothing of one another's work and do not live and travel in the same circles. It is rather dubious that Schoenberg's idea of 12-tone music appears only a little over a year after Hauer's did. I do not dismiss that Schoenberg was a good composer. In fact, I find this to be quite the opposite. Schoenberg was a revolutionary composer in his own right, but perhaps his title as the inventor of the 12-tone system should be reevaluated. However, Schoenberg's saving grace when it comes to claiming some ownership over 12-tone music is that his system is different than Hauer's. The main principle, however, is the same, and that is the concept of composing with all 12 tones of the chromatic scale. But Hauer went in a different direction with his theory by identifying 44 tropes, which were basically 44 pairs of complementary hexachords. Hexachords are sets of six notes, so two sets would give the composer everything that is needed to write 12 tone music. Schoenberg, on the other hand, does not suggest composing with tropes, but rather just focusing on the individual tones of the chromatic scale. I will at some point get around to making a video explaining Hauer's take on 12-tone music as compared to Schoenberg's, but seeing as my knowledge of Hauer's system is too limited for the time being, I will forgo this for now. But from what I can hear from his music, his take on the 12-tone system intrigues me, as it produces incredibly interesting music, which you can see in the following examples. Thank you. 
The last example I will play is his piano work Nomos, written in 1919, and it is agreed by most to be the first 12-tone composition ever written. Hauer might very well have had his name enshrined with equal importance along Schoenberg as one of the earliest pioneers of 12-tone music, but pride got the better of Hauer. Schoenberg seemed to think highly enough of Hauer that he offered to publish a theory book on 12-tone music alongside him in the 1920s. Schoenberg's offer went as such. Let us write a book together, wherein each chapter written by me is interspersed with a chapter written by you. Let us present our ideas in a way that shows our differences clinically and our problems, albeit politely, with one another's ideas. Due to the similarities between our ideas, we can truly develop a foundation with which we can more easily associate with one another. Hauer, being a notoriously difficult person to work with, eventually opted to not go through with this. He would develop his own circle of private students who had no contact with Schoenberg's students. And from 1937 onwards, Hauer developed a stamp which he would apply next to his signature on his letters, which stated the following. Der geistige Urheber und trotz vielen Nachahmern immer noch der einzige Kenner und Könner der Zwölftonmusik. Which roughly translates to the creator and in spite of many imitators, only person who truly understands and composes 12-tone music. Hauer became consumed with the notion of being acknowledged by the music intelligentsia of Vienna as the one true inventor of 12-tone music. But when the Nazis annexed Austria in 1938, his music suddenly became outlawed and considered degenerate art, and for the duration of the war, Hauer went silent, only composing after the war had ended. In the meantime, Schoenberg fled to Los Angeles, California, where he taught a new generation of students at the University of Southern California. Teaching in Southern California, Schoenberg would have even more opportunity to present and teach his theory and help bring it into the mainstream, whilst the self-anointed inventor of 12-tone music remained in Vienna during the war, composing nothing. They say history is written by the victors, and Schoenberg's theory was definitely the winner of this intellectual battle. But perhaps if Hauer took up Schoenberg's opportunity to write a book together, his ideas might have entered the standard practice of 12-tone music and might have influenced a large group of composers. But in the end, it was Hauer's pride that prevented him from being considered Schoenberg's equal, and this is why Hauer remains mostly forgotten.